Sinister shows have always been part of the Halloween Haunt experience at Kings Island. The event begins its 2023 season this weekend. Uh, alongside Ryan Sir, I'm Don Helbig, and this is Tower Topics. Tower Topics is a podcast by Kings Island fans for Kings Island fans, because that's who we are and that's who we care about. All right, so we're going to do kind of a different episode today. We're going to talk about uh, our top five favorite haunt shows. All right, uh, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna go down the list. We 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 predetermined this list of five, uh, and these are in no particular order. So, Don, why don't you take the first one? What's the first one, Ryan? Let's go with Hot Blooded. Yeah, I love that show. It's got the vampires and stuff, and. Uh, I I love all the pyro and the flames and uh, really cool songs and so on. That show lasted for over 10 years, didn't it? It did. It had quite the cult following that it had developed. And, uh, you know, every night at Halloween Haunt, you would see, you know, a packed international showplace theater. You know, it was great to see. And, you know, you talked about the songs, you know, it was that rock and roll exploding onto the, the stage and, uh, just really well done. I thought the you know the choreography was really good. Very talented cast. Uh, you know, one of my favorite all time shows at Kings Island. Yeah, mine too. Uh, you know, we're gonna get to Dead Awakening here soon. Spoiler alert! But I uh, when they added Dead Awakening, I was like, they're not gonna be able to top this. And I mean, Hot Blooded sits on the same shelf. Mm-hmm. It's kind of arguable as to which one's better. But uh, yeah, love that show. Uh, and you see on social media all the time. You know, whenever the Halloween stuff comes up, since that show had kind of been you know, retired, Mm -hmm. you know, or put in mothballs right now, because I'm sure at some point it may come back. But, um, you know, it's one of the things that you see more often than anything else about, you know, Halloween Hunt is bring back hot blooded. Uh, So, uh, yeah, definitely had its following. Absolutely. All right. Next, Ryan. And this is one of your favorite shows. I know Ghouls Gone Wild. Yeah, Ghouls Gone Wild. That was a fun one. That was the first time we had uh, uh, like a earnest show i guess we should say in the fest house for for halloween haunt they had a daytime and a nighttime version and uh they had some fun with uh making the nighttime one a little bit more spicy and stuff but if i recall they had uh frankenstein's bride they had uh frankenstein himself so i guess that's a couple um did they have a mummy it's been a little while but i feel like mummy mummy. yeah mummy they had the werewolf Mm. was in it um you know again a great great song selection uh for that show very popular with the park guest, you know, not the following that Hot Blood had had, but still one of those shows that, uh, you know, fit what they were doing at that time for Halloween Haunt, uh, you know, was was great entertainment for those enjoying a meal in the Fest House. You know, I miss that one. I do too. And um, here's a little fun fact about that. One of the tech guys told me that he built an Easter egg into the show where um, the since they had a window in the back of the like the the set. He had it so the sun was rising in the east and or sorry, the sun was going down as the show started. Then it got completely dark and then it started to rise again at the end. So it was just something fun that they built into it. Yeah. A lot of fun there. Now, you made reference to this one, Dead Awakening, uh, 2007, the show debuted. Now, this is when Kings Island kind of elevated their Halloween event. It went from Fear Fest to Halloween Haunt the brand that had, uh, you know, launched at Knott's Berry Farm. It was going to be more intense, you know, um, not recommended for children, all those kind of things. And this show, I, you know, was the show, I believe, that uh, told everyone when they came in the fall, this wasn't the family-friendly Halloween event that you're used to or the Kings Island that you're used to. This is totally off the charts, different, um, you know, uh, kind of a violent show, really, in a lot of ways with what was going on with it. But, you know, the the songs were were um, familiar mm-hmm. to the audience. Um, the storyline was pretty easy to follow, I think. Uh, very talented cast. Some of them actually went on to uh, perform on uh, national, you know, Broadway and those kind of things. So a lot of, a lot of really talented people in that show. Uh, but it was only around for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. But still, uh, you know, a lot of guests remember it. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I remember just seeing that show and being like, what? And like the, the funniest part was how the the I, I don't want to say show stops because it's not the pri- the correct term, but like the end of each scene where like the lights would get dark before the you know other performers come out on stage was, was something terrible happened each time. So the, the audience wants to clap 
but they also just saw a guy like hang himself. That was one. And then at the end, they had the girl that was tied to the bed and stabbed to death. And they just left her there after, at the end of the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was my first year working at Kings Island as the the PR uh, manager, and we had a media event. It was up in the International Restaurant, and I had dressed up mm-hmm. for the media event. I was kind of like an undertaker type thing, yeah. and a couple people from the marketing department after they saw the first run of uh, Dead Awakening and they saw some guests leaving and, you know, parade going to guest services because nobody expected this, you know, mm-hmm. Fear Fest was, you know, it was pretty tame, you know, the, the mazes and those kind of things were, you know, where everything was, but nothing outside the park was really too much different. Uh, but they were like, uh, you might want to get all that stuff off your face. We're going to have to go deal with some guests down at guest services about the show, but controversial for sure. But that's what they were going for at that time. I mean, it was going to be about blood, terror, gore, you know, no one and nothing is off limits. That's when that all started to come about, uh, you know, and they did, you know, say that, uh, you know, parental discretion was advised before you not only came to the event, but before you even walked into the theater uh, for the show. How effective is that when you say parental discretion is advised? Is that just, it, do, do parents honestly say like, no, that's probably not appropriate for me? Or can you just use that as uh, leverage? You know, everybody... <laughs> Everybody looks at it differently with that. Some did, mm-hmm. you know, and then some, you know, it's King's Island. How bad can it be? And then they get there and, you know, there's, like you said, the stabbings and all those kind of things going on the stage are like, you know, this is a little bit over the top. But, um, but you know, it did have a nice, nice two year run. And, uh, you know, I still hear about that from people, too. You know, they'll ask me, you know, is there any chance that show would ever come back? You know, I don't know. But uh, it was very well written uh, by King's Island's entertainment team, as was hot blooded and, uh, you know, done in house. Mm-hmm. So really good job there. So the next show I want to talk about, uh, you and I, you know, both became friends with this guy mm-hmm. and, uh, just, just a great, great guy. And he had done, um, a couple of years of summer runs at the park. Uh, but they brought him in to do a Halloween event. And that was again, intended for mature audience. And of course I'm talking about Ed Alonzo. Ed Alonzo. Um, yeah, uh, that was definitely one of my favorites. I, I think it's a huge travesty that the park doesn't really use the, the King's Island theater for Halloween haunt since it's an entertainment based event. And that's a great, I, I understand that they use it for other stuff, but, um, I, I'm always bummed out by that, but this year's 2013, they actually did. Um, and you know, I thought that, you know, it, it was going to be the same show as we had all season, but, uh, maybe an F word or two that like, you know, the general public couldn't handle, he took that show in a completely different direction. Uh, the core pieces were there from the initial show, but the comedy was definitely on a uh, PG-13++ plus plus kind of basis. Uh, he took... <laughs> what a show. Um, I mean, but but let's let's capitalize on that a little bit. It's uh, I, If I recall, that's the one where he would get out of the straitjacket and he would slam the stra- straitjacket on the ground and then undo it and... There would be a duck in it. Do you remember that? Yes. And uh, he did that, I think, during the regular season two. I could be mistaken. But with this, when he would always have a, a member of the audience um, pull, like, help him get into the straitjacket, and then he would openly insult them in, like, sometimes, like, pretty distasteful ways. And then, you know, people were kind of in on it and stuff, but they would tighten it, and he'd shriek like they, like, made it really tight or whatever. Very, very funny guy. Um I, I would love to see that guy come back. He's he's very genuine guy, very nice guy, but great show. Great, great show. For- yeah, he, he, he's made the rounds doing Halloween events, not only at Cedar Fair Parks, but, you know, some of the other chains have brought him in as well. So, uh, you know, part of his act, you know, or different things that he can do, you know, it's perfectly geared uh, for the mature audiences during the Halloween season. Now, let's talk about a show that uh, debuted last year. Mm-hmm. I believe it's back this year. Uh, we're talking about Night Walkers in the Showplace Theater. Uh, you love that show. I did. Uh, it seems like that that show was very polarizing. Uh, it, it, it was like maybe 10, 15% just absolutely hated it and wouldn't watch it. But the vast majority loved it. Um, and the energy that that show brought, I mean, the bikes and stuff like that we'd seen all season, that wasn't a big deal, but this was kind of like, um, kind of like hot blooded and dead awakening in terms of it had a vague storyline to it. Um, it didn't exactly tell a story, but you, it, it had a horror movie theme with the cheerleader and the guy running off and, um, you know, she essentially joins the dark side and, uh, it, it's, 
a lot of uh, a lot of emotions packed into that half hour. Uh, but one thing I did notice is that they have the screen in the background and the image changes so much that it's like if you're under the age of eight and you watch that, you're going to get diagnosed with ADHD before you know it, because they say that like screens and tablets can cause that sort of thing. So I always wondered, like, you know, if they're sitting at a show, you because I've seen it at rock concerts, too. And, you know, sometimes kids go to that stuff. Uh you know, those flickering screens, I mean, just wow. But nonetheless, the show is like super high energy. Uh, the stunts are really cool. Um, that's I, my favorite part of the whole show is when the trampoline guy on the tramp wall would climb up on the truss uh, that's on like the awning over over the stage and would jump off that. I thought that was awesome. Uh, it's probably not a big deal for him, but it looks like it's a thousand feet tall to us. But very, very cool show. Yeah, there was always a lot going on with it. Um, took me a couple of times watching it to really catch on to everything that was going on because there was just so much no matter where you look there was action you know uh, the, there was the dancers the bike people uh the two main characters you had the screen in the background as you mentioned so a lot going on but uh, high energy and the, the crowds really seemed to love it i mean it was one of those shows that you know you would walk by show place any time of the night during during hunt and it was standing room only and, uh, you know, that's a great thing when people want to come back and see it more than once, you know, and you have these guests that, you know, saw that show, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 times, you know, and you're talking about a six week run here. So, uh, you know, it, w when you want to come back and, and continue to watch that over and over again, I think you got a winner on your hand. Absolutely. You know, with, with theme park shows, you got Disney and stuff where, you know, if you go to animal kingdom, you have to see the festival of the lion King, but for the vast majority of theme park shows, it's something to do. And sometimes they're like, Oh, that was pretty good. But for that, like we have to go see that again. That's an impressive, uh, feeling to pull out of the audience, you know? Um, but yeah. yeah and, and I think too, with those shows that, that we just talked about, you know, these five that we picked out as what we thought were the five greatest Halloween haunt shows of all time at King's Island. It gave the performers, too, I think, a chance to showcase their skills a little bit more than you might see in a summer show. I, I completely agree. And, um, you know, just uh, seeing the performers on social media and stuff, they always talk about how much they miss hot blooded and all that. So I think they had a lot of fun with it, too. You know, it's uh, got to be fun, racy. Uh, none of it was really insulting to the performers. I don't think it ever went that direction as far as too racy or anything like that. Uh, but it, it was they probably enjoyed that. Uh, I'm in the show and we're telling a story rather than, you know, I'm dancing to these 10 or 15 songs and in the course of a half hour. But uh, looking forward to Nightwalkers coming back. Um, I've seen some posts on social media saying there's going to be some changes this year. I'm not going to say them because I'm not entirely certain and it's not my position, but uh, looking forward to seeing it. But uh, make sure that if you head to Halloween Haunt this year, this is 2023, uh, you check out Nightwalkers because it's going to be a good time. Well, let me ask you this, Ryan. Mm -hmm. We talked about, you know, you've got these sinister shows. You've got the, the indoor mazes. You've got the scare zones. And you also have some of the best night rides on the planet during Halloween Haunt. Mm -hmm. um, of all those different elements of this event, what's your favorite part? The shows. Uh, because I feel like they've got, um, there. there's a certain box that you have to fit into uh, when it comes to theme park shows during the summer and during Halloween haunts. Uh, now there's two different directions you can go. You can have good morning boys and boils and ghouls and you know, all that stuff and have it kitty. And then it's just kind of like anything else. But you know, when it's kind of like, well, we're going to push the limits a little bit, which this often does. Um, that's, that's something I really enjoy. Love night rides, love the mazes, but I, I always look forward to seeing the shows being released. Yeah. And that's where I always saw a lot of the, you know, guests that during the summer, they're riding rides all the time, mm -hmm. but during the Halloween season, I always saw them at the shows. Absolutely. All right. Well, make sure you check out the shows at, uh, at Halloween Haunt this year. Uh, I'm Ryan Sir, along with Don Helbig, and this is Tower Topics.